Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is already a new year, I can't believe it's 2020. I thought I would start the year with a video on a really cool project I worked on at the end of last year in Japan. I went to Japan to attend a project that was all about Japanese rice and it was hosted by the Japanese Ministry of Agriculture and Nippon Travel Agency. I wanted to say a huge thank you to Andy-san and Amy of the Sushi Chef Institute for recommending me for this project. They gathered a group of highly skilled and talented chefs from all across the United States that own Japanese restaurants like David from Shibumi, which has won Michelin star in LA, all the way across to John from Sushi by Boo and Una from Sushi by Bay in New York. They also brought along a couple of media people like myself as well as Hiro from Diaries of a Master Sushi Chef, which you can find his channel up here. I'm gonna link it for you. I wanted to say this is probably one of the best press trips I've ever been on. It was planned super well. It went so smoothly. The pacing was super good. We learned so, so much and we were able to provide a lot of really good feedback. So today I'm gonna share with you guys what this trip was like and some of the things I learned. So they flew everybody out for this press trip. I was actually in Japan prior to the press trip, so I just sort of met up with them in Shinjuku when the program started. The first part of the project was a one day rice intensive workshop. I would say prior to this, my knowledge of rice in general was probably super average, maybe slightly above average, but generally really basic. I also wouldn't say my interest in learning about rice prior to this was really high. I'm not a chef, I'm a home cook. So I never felt the need to like learn really, really in depth all about rice. However, I learned so much about rice on this trip to, and I totally respect it on a completely different level. And I think it's a level that I wish other people would learn about it as well. The keynote speaker at the rice intensive was Shinichi Katayama, who is a five-star rice meister which I didn't even know existed. Wanna say hi, Chad? So what I really enjoyed was he not only talked about Japanese rice, but he talked about the strengths, weaknesses, and different uses for Japanese rice versus California grown Japanese rice, which is mostly what is used in the United States and North America at Japanese restaurants and at home. I learned about like the reasons for why rice in different areas tastes better, which has to do with like temperature differences from day and night because they open up during the day when it's warm and they close at night. And the more they open and close, the more of a mochi mochi feel from the rice after you harvest it and cook it. It actually tastes more mochi mochi, which is a better, uh, more bouncy texture. Also learned that the consistency of Japanese rice is a little bit more bouncy, which is actually better for nigiri sushi but California grown Japanese rice is better for American style rolls. It is able to hold together and really hold the weight of all of the ingredients in a really excessive American roll. We also learned a lot about cooking rice, like for Japanese rice, you need to wash it, rinse it, rinse it, rinse it, rinse it, and then soak it and cook it to get the best quality. However, for California grown, you actually only need to rinse it like two or three times really quickly. It's enriched, so you, if you wash it too much, you actually lose the enrichment um, and you don't need to soak it. You could just cook it right away and it's gonna have a really good consistency. So much, much less maintenance. We also learned that California rice is really good hot, um, but once it cools down, the texture sort of suffers. But Japanese rice is actually really good consistency when it is cooled down, which is why it is really good for nigiri sushi as well as onigiri or omusubi. So stuff that you could eat cold, it still tastes good. I've never done a side-by-side -side taste test of Japanese rice and California grown Japanese rice ever in my life. Um, but you could actually really, really taste the difference and it was really cool to try that and see it. After that, they had an omusubi or rice ball interactive performance that was by the two artsiest looking Japanese dudes I've ever seen in like a really, really formal sort of setting or establishment. These guys run Sankakuya, which is a pop-up that does omusubi making right in front of you, sort of like how sushi bars make sushi right in front of you and you eat it right away. They do that, but for rice balls. I actually did find out later they are actually artsy. They do production, graphic design, and video work. So um, that actually leads into 
why they are so good at doing what they do because they make really unique rice balls. Um, they have a bunch of different ingredients put out in front of you and they customize it for your palate and what you would enjoy. And it was really cool because they had traditional ingredients like mentaiko, salmon, seaweed, but they also had really unique ingredients like gorgonzola cheese, which was so amazing to see them mix modern things and traditional things into something really new and delicious. They were easy to talk to, they answered so many questions, and honestly, it was probably one of the best food experiences I've ever had. It was really, really fun. After the workshop, we had a couple hours to kill before the next section, so I went to Toyosu Fish Market, um, which is the new fish market, and I went with John and Una, and we got to eat some really good sushi. And it was such a good experience because I'm not a chef, but they are sushi chefs, and it was fun to see them interact with the chef there and really, really enjoy, enjoy the sushi. After that, we headed back to Shinjuku to an izakaya where we had a dinner meeting and we also learned about sake pairing there. And that ends part one of the trip. The next part of the trip is when we go into the fields to learn how rice is produced all the way from how it's grown to basically how it ends up on your table and to go really in depth and learn the process. And here we got split up into three groups. So one group went up to Hokkaido, another group went up to Iwate Prefecture, and the group I was in went to Toyama Prefecture, which is about a two hour bullet train ride almost directly west of Tokyo and it's touching the Sea of Japan. Toyama is known for their soybeans and rice, and I'm a city girl, so I always just saw, you know, Toyama as being like super inaka or like super, super countryside, like nothing, just fields. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised to find that I had a really, really good time actually in Toyama. Um, there's a lot to do. And even though it is just the countryside, I actually really like the Japanese countryside, so I really enjoyed the experience. In my group was Twist, who owns Blue Buddha Sushi Lounge, which they have one location in Arizona and one in Montana, and Alvin, who um, owns Lin's in San Antonio, it's a teppanyaki restaurant, as well as our amazing, amazing interpreter, Hiroko-san, who is from Yokohama, um, actually pretty close to where my family's house is, and Yohei-san from the Nippon Travel Agency, he's the one who conducted and planned this whole tour, and he was so, so fun to travel with. We went with Shinmei, which is a Japanese company that produces and distributes rice from Toyama Prefecture, and what was really cool is I found out that their US headquarters is basically down the street from my house, um, and they also own one of my favorite restaurants, Japanese restaurants in LA called Waratsumi, which totally makes sense because Waratsumi is all about how good their rice is. In Toyama, we spent most of our time in Yuzen and a little in Kurobe, which are small towns in the northeasternmost part of Toyama Prefecture. They are sandwiched between the Northern Alps and the Sea of Japan and centered on the huge alluvial fan coming from the Kurobe River. The area is absolutely beautiful. It is so amazing to see the mountains and the fields and the ocean basically all in one swoop. The summers there are really hot and the winters are really cold and snowy and there's a lot of rainfall in general even during the dry season, but that makes it great for growing really good rice. Also, since the water is good there, since it's Alps snowy water, um, it's actually good when you make the rice with the water from Toyama. It's supposed to taste much better. Lucky for us, when we were there, the weather was absolutely perfect. It was sunny, partly cloudy, um, and then it was just sort of like light jacket weather. It was really nice. It was so much fun getting to go around the town of Muzen and the surrounding areas um, and just really take in all of the beauty. And we even got to stop by a shrine, which I thought was really cool and fun, especially because it was Twist's actually first time being in Japan. And seeing him really soak in the culture and new experiences was so refreshing. After adventuring around a little bit, we had a lunch meeting with the Toyama sector of the National Federation of Agriculture in a really beautiful old converted Japanese traditional house. The food was a traditional kaiseki meal and it was so, so good and delicious and I had barracuda for the first time, which was actually really, really good. After that, we headed to the Toyama JA Minaho to see how the rice is produced. I have never been to a rice factory and I had no idea what to expect. 
We got to see how it was made all the way from the field to the bag and we were so lucky to have really good weather. Wind was blowing through the golden fields and they were bending the rice and it was so anime-esque. It was really pretty. Um, and the ready to be plucked rice, as Reina calls it, was absolutely picture perfect. We watched the tractors pick the rice, which was what I expected, but still really good to watch. The facility and warehouse where they processed the rice after being picked in the field was where I was actually pleasantly surprised. It was way smaller than I thought it was going to be and it was so, so clean. Like Japan in general is very, very clean, but I have never seen a warehouse or a factory this clean ever anywhere. Really the only like dusty or dirty part was um, when they back up the truck and dump it into the mill to dehusk the rice that they just picked from the field, which makes total sense, but even then it wasn't very bad. They said they actually have a filtration system that runs through the whole factory that sucks up all the dust in the air and then it compacts it into like dust or like dirt bricks and then they could actually just put that back in the field since at that point it's basically just dirt. As it comes with the machine down to be bagged, there's actually a little machine that removes the grains of rice that are imperfect, that have discolorations or imperfections, and they get scanned and it gets shot at with pinpoint precision by air that just like knocks them out of the line. It separates the good grains from the bad grains and it's like insane how fast it does this. The rice is then bagged in these huge bags and taken to a storage warehouse. And there they're separated into groups. Rice that is to be sold within Japan, rice that is going to be exported and sold out of Japan, rice that is going to be saved um, for emergencies in Japan, so the government is required for them to donate X amount of rice every year from their harvest to be saved in case there's an emergency within Japan so they could distribute it to the peoples. And they have um, a pile of rice to donate um, to emergencies outside of Japan. At the end of the day, we got to stop by a really, really small local market and got to see the rice actually being sold. I wanna say a huge thank you to Shinmei, the Toyama JA Minaho, and to the Nippon Travel Agency for showing us around the city and showing us the facility and teaching us so much about Japanese rice. The JA Minaho president actually even took us to his home where he has his own rice processing facility that he made like on a really small scale and I thought that was really sweet and it was really cool to see. It was really great getting to talk to the people that worked there and lived there and just learn so much about the industry, the product, as well as just people in general. And the next stop after the facility tour is Kurobe. As we spent the day in the valley, we got to head up into the mountains to go to Kurobe, which is known for their onsen or hot springs. If you know me, I love onsen. We were lucky to be able to stay at a ryokan, which is a traditional Japanese inn that also has their own onsen. The ryokan was a normal mid-level ryokan, which had tatami floors where you sleep on a futon or futon. Our ryokan overlooked the Kurobe River and had such a nice view. We had a typical kaiseki meal that had all local ingredients and it was really, really good. And I finished off the night in the onsen. Our ryokan had an outdoor onsen which overlooked the hills and the river and it was beautiful and I fully took advantage of it, especially because there was no one else there so I basically had the whole onsen to myself. Well, I guess I actually technically finished off the night with ice cream. I usually like to get milk after the onsen but they didn't have any so ice cream was the next best thing and it was so good. I really wish we had more time in Kurobe because it was breathtaking. There's a lot of hiking trails that we saw that looked really fun that we wish we could have done. Um, the town looked so cute but we didn't have time to really walk through it and there were wild monkeys everywhere. They're so cute but just as a warning, Japanese monkeys are not very nice so just sort of leave them alone. 100% would love to go back and I really recommend staying in Kurobe if you're in the area. In general, I would love to go back and spend more time in Toyama and see what this prefecture really has to offer as a couple of days, it's just not enough. And that wraps up the press trip. I had so much fun and I learned way more than I thought I would. I look forward to teaching you guys more about Japanese rice over time so you can really learn to appreciate rice to your fullest. Thank you so much for watching and I'm really excited for all the content I'm gonna be working on in 2020. 
Make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and also make sure to add me on Instagram since I am constantly posting about Japan and food content on there on a consistent basis. Thanks again, and I will see you in my next video or on Instagram. Mata ne!